Yo, Joe, it's time for some toy trivia. Hey, troops, I'm your host, Brian Rollins, and this is episode 217 of the Dorky, Geeky, Nerdy Trivia Podcast. This week, we've got G.I. Joe trivia. It's a toy line that's been around for decades, and it was huge when I was a kid in the 1980s. Let's see how well you know its history and mythology. As always, we've got three rounds of 10 questions each. Each round gets a little harder, so prepare yourself. When you're done, please take a second to drop us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get the show. Okay, that's the briefing, soldiers. Time to hit the trivia. The Dorky Round Number 1. G.I. Joe was subtitled what starting in 1982? A Real American Hero. Number two, the term G.I. Joe was popularized during which war? World War II. The G.I. stands for either government issue or ground infantry. Number three, what is the name of the mute but deadly hand-to-hand -hand combat expert for the Joes? Snake Eyes. Number four. What is the title of the first live-action G.I. Joe movie? G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra. Number five, what villainous character wears a mask made of beryllium steel? Destro. Number six, G.I. Joe was scaled down to three and three quarters inches due to the popularity of what 1970s toy? Kenner's Star Wars action figures. Number seven, starting in 1982, who was G.I. Joe's nemesis? Cobra. Number eight, as of 2023, how many live action G.I. Joe movies have there been? Three. Number nine, which Joe leader was scripted to die in the animated G.I. Joe movie? Duke. Due to poor reactions from Optimus Prime's death in the Transformers movie, Duke's fate was changed to being in a coma. Number 10. Finish the phrase, and now you know. And knowing is half the battle. The Geeky Round Number 1. Chris Lotta voiced Starscream in Transformers and what villainous leader on G.I. Joe? Cobra Commander Number 2. Who voiced Galobulus in G.I. Joe the movie? Burgess Meredith. Number three, Cobra was ruled by what genetically engineered emperor? Cobra. 
Serpentor. Number four, what twin brothers run extensive enterprises as a front for Cobra? Tomax and Zaymont. Number five, what series, starting in 2010, had the Joes on the run for a crime they didn't commit? Jejo Renegades. Number six, how tall were the original G.I. Joe toys? Twelve inches, or thirty centimeters. Number seven. What military conflict led to a severe decline in the popularity of G.I. Joe toys? The Vietnam War. Number eight. What action star played Roadblock in G.I. Joe Retaliation? Dwayne Johnson. Number nine. What was the name of the massive aircraft carrier playset for the Joes? The USS Flag. Number 10. Who played General Hawk in G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra? Dennis Quaid. The Nerdy Round. Number 1. Anastasia Cesarovna is better known by what nickname? The Baroness. Number two, what company published G.I. Joe comics from 2009 to 2022? IDW Publishing. Number three, because people couldn't be shown getting killed in the cartoon, what android was added to Cobra ranks in 1986? Bats. Number four, the G.I. Joe toy line first debuted in what year? 1964. Number five. The Sky Striker is a toy version of what real world aircraft? The F 14 Tomcat, made really famous by the movie Top Gun. Number six. The Real American Heroes toy line was based on the idea of Fury Force by what comic book writer? Larry Hama. Hama wrote the background cards for most of the 80s G.I. Joe characters. Number 7. Marlon Wayans played Witch Joe in Rise of Cobra. Ripcord. Number eight. During the height of the Vietnam War, G.I. Joe was rebranded as what?
adventure team. Number nine, Destro runs an organization called Mars. What does Mars stand for? Military Armaments Research Syndicate. Number 10. The animated G.I. Joe the movie was released direct to video in what year? Nineteen eighty seven. And that's it for G.I. Joe trivia this week. I played with G.I. Joe toys as a kid, but I don't remember actually owning any. I think my dad, who spent a few years in the jungles of Vietnam during the 60s, steered me away from them. I had plenty of Transformers, Lego, and the like to keep me entertained. For those of you really steeped in the lore, let me know on social media what your favorite Joe character was or is. I'll be back here next week with another episode, something a little different. Here's a clue for what to expect. What comedy troupe, formed in the 1960s, was made up of five Brits and an American? We're coming up on April Fool's Day, and we could use a little laughter, right? I know I do. See you back here next Wednesday. This has been episode 217 of the Dorky, Geeky, Nerdy Trivia Podcast. The theme music is by Jason Shaw at audionautics.com. This podcast was written, produced, and hosted by me, Brian Rollins. You can find me at thevoicesinmyhead.com. Thanks for listening, and now you know. Tis the season to be podcasting. Stay inside with a warm beverage and a hot microphone. If you're interested, Spotify can help you out. They've got a platform that lets you make one, distribute it, and earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So you've already got the equipment necessary to start recording today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify, Apple, Google, and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. And when you want to take conversations with your fans to the next level, Q&A and polls are an excellent way to get them talking. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. Best of all, it's completely free. I switched dorky, geeky, nerdy over to Spotify for Podcasters, and I haven't regretted it. The analytics are fantastic, and the new tools for hosting and updating the feed are way more than I could do self-hosting. Now, it's your turn. Head to podcasters.spotify.com and read all about it then let me know what you are podcasting all about. When a U.S. expedition is attacked, three survivors, a professor, her student, and a soldier are saved by a mysterious vessel, the Namtsev. The enigmatic Captain Nikto elects to keep the captives aboard, requiring each of their skills for his daring pursuits. But as evidence of a rogue submarine alerts the world's navies, the captives must work together to avoid annihilation. 20,000 Kilos Under the Sea is a fast-paced adventure thriller that's described as the classic Disney adventure meets the hunt for Red October. 20,000 Kilos Under the Sea, a modern retelling of the Jules Verne classic, written by Richard Wycliffe and narrated by Brian Rollins. Available right now on Audible or iTunes. Discover adventure and madness beneath the waves.